когда начинал все вот в ММА именно, у меня была цель не стать там чемпионом и все. Представлять нашу республику, нашу страну, это то, за что я дерусь. When Habib was the newcomer, contender, even champion, there was this one dude always next to him. This guy was constantly there, in the corner during his UFC debut and shoulder to shoulder with him when Habib faced Conor McGregor in the biggest UFC fight ever. This guy was the one who matched Habib in training. This guy was Abdul Manab's favorite student. Islam was my father's favorite student. This guy was the next in line after Habib was done with the sport. I really believe he's gonna become champion. Why I talk about Islam? Because this is my father's legacy. Eventually, as promised, the guy became champion, but it was not good enough. At every step, he was compared to Habib himself, and his own rise to the top of the division coincided with a few others. Suddenly, he didn't just have to live up to the reputation of Habib's greatness, he had his own battles to take care of. I ain't tapping, I ain't going to sleep, I'm getting out and I'm putting hands on on him and that's that. A small crack in the invincible aura was celebrated as the greatest triumph for some others, but UFC 294 reinstated Islam as the dominant force he always was. Islam Mahachev entered the UFC as an undefeated Dagestani, much like Habib, but he wasn't able to keep that zero intact, with his second fight ending in a knockout loss. A shot by it is all over. That definitely put a stop to the whole Habib 2.0 prophecy, but Islam was quick to regroup, and he kept on winning against people outside the top 10. A dangerous wrestler with little name value and outside the ranking. A lot of top lightweights dismissed Islam, but the guy himself knew he had to wait because his best friend Habib was at the top of the division, champion and one of the best fighters in the world. You want to be number one contender, yeah? You want to be champion? You need to fight Habib for the belt. Will you fight Habib? If I need belt, I go Habib strong. <laughs> not willing to fight Habib, and the top lightweights not willing to fight him, Islam was left to deal with lowly contenders, building up a paper-thin resume. 155 pounds, which is the hardest division in MMA. If Islam Makhlchev can beat them or not, or if he's better or not, is not the conversation for right now. He has to get on the docket with one of them. Islam was told that his time would come, and while it did, it was not as glorious as anticipated. After the sudden retirement of Habib at UFC 254, there was a void as the lightweight championship was vacated, but when Charles Oliveira, a fan favorite, won the belt at UFC 262, fans were quick to push him as the next dominant champion. I mean, the whole thing was just frenetic. It was amazing to watch. It was amazing to see from beginning to end. The second round was just a crazy, crazy finish. Meanwhile, Islam, who was often talked about as the next champion, didn't seem good enough to be Charles. The guy comes behind it, like Charles Oliveira, and he starts to win and dominate the class like he has. Yeah, I mean, it'll be nice to see him fight Habib, right? What better way to try to draw him back in than by having Oliveira beat his friend, training partner, and longtime, you know what I'm saying? Like Habib, maybe, but this regressed version of the Eagle had nothing for Du Bronx. Charles Oliveira coach uh, say, okay, come to Brazil, fight, no problem. Send us location, we're gonna come to Brazil. Islam gonna ride Charles Oliveira, Oliveira like his horse. We're gonna take this belt. We're gonna show them if Samba was easy, it would be called Jiu Jitsu, and we're gonna go home. He's dominant on top. He was positionally dominant. This is who Mahachev is. He's been able to dominate these guys with one facet of his mixed martial arts game. I told you, Islam gonna take him to the deep ocean and make him tap. I told him, Islam on another level. Took the Dagestani protege two rounds to finish Oliveira. And on that night, he proved to everyone he was good enough to be Habib's successor. But this newfound respect lasted a grand total of five minutes. Because right after the Charles win, Islam called out the pound for pound king, Alexander Volkanovsky. Now is our plan fly to all the way to Australia and fight in pound for pound king backyard with Volkanovsky. Got ourselves a champion versus champion rivalry. Islam Mahachev was supposed to slaughter the smaller fighter, even if he was a champion. But in Perth, we were back to square one. Volk lost the fight, but he was hailed as a victor. He won, he won. Yeah, he won. Volkanovski yeah. is the winner! Yeah. Volkanovski no. is the what? fucking oh, double champ. What is 100 percent While Islam, who was awarded a unanimous decision, was labeled a loser. It was very close. 
Did we really, you know, settle it? How could you call yourself the lightweight champion when a featherweight ended the fight smashing your face into the canvas? Selective memory struck again, and nobody remembered the first four rounds where the two champions put on a striking clinic. With Islam landing the better strikes for the majority of the fight, the deafening visual from the event was round five, and that was all that mattered. It finally happened. Islam was pushed to the limits and looked human. I beat him in a decision. It was good experience for me. Last round he landed its good shot, uh, good good uh, good punch, and but all other rounds, in my my opinion, I I win. Took a pound for pound great, a literal freak athlete with fearless technique to give him trouble, and he still ended up winning. Dehydrated, hostile crowd, unfamiliar territory and all, but now. That fight, even if it was a victory, loomed over Islam as the company struggled to find the next contender at 155. What names stick out to you as potential next challengers? I don't hate the rematch. I really don't. On the other hand, Volk returned to the octagon months after UFC 284, Hulk smashing Yay Rodriguez and notching another defense of his featherweight belt. I don't believe anyone can beat me. But everyone has a puncher's chance. Everyone can catch you. Again, I've got a lot of respect for Islam. He is a great fighter. Uh, very good. That's why I believe he's going to be, be champion uh, for a while if I don't fight him. The pressure doubled from Achev as he had to put on a similarly impressive performance in his next title fight, which was scheduled to be a rematch against Charles Oliveira. That champion versus champion rematch, however, was destined to happen. Oliveira withdrew with a bad cut and sparring, and the supposed nightmare of Islam Volk had no problem stepping in on short notice. This time around, the fight was in Abu Dhabi, Islam's backyard, but crowd support wasn't going to do jack shit for the guy. Volkanovski had enough skill and strength to survive on the ground, and the striking. The striking. The fifth round was all that mattered, really. Every single time ESPN, MMA, or UFC, or, or these, these, these blog on Instagram posted something about the fight, the result, and you know, I would see people in the comments saying shit like, delete this, or uh, robbery, or oh, Volk should have won this. Now, I'm not with that, bro. It was a lose-lose situation for Islam. He had his belt on the line, the first fight haunting him, and absolutely everything to lose. Man. What he put? Nothing. He just come to make money. I put my win streak, I put my belt. Another decision victory and his greatest rival would be a 35-year-old featherweight. To truly set it all right, Islam had no choice but to finish the most impressive fighter on the planet in Alexander Volkanovsky. But this fight, everything is gonna change. I want to finish him and finish all this talk about this fight. After all. That is something Habib's successor would be expected to do. Islam walked to the octagon at UFC 294 with another chip on his shoulder. He had to prove himself at UFC 280 against Dubronx and he did so in two rounds. After Perth, the lightweight champion was on a mission and out to make a statement. Tomorrow I will show you best performance. Thank you. Thank you all of you guys because I know you all support me. Thanks so much. This was not going to become a rivalry not on his watch. Maybe the hydration talk was for real, because Islam seemed a dad quicker and he did not allow Volk to settle in. The obvious game plan was to employ a grappling heavy attack and tire the featherweight champion for a late submission. But Islam, who was actually a pretty good striker, kept the challenger on edge with kicks to the body. And at the end, it was a kick to the head that ended the fight. And just like that, UFC 284 was a distant memory. In between UFC 284 and UFC 294, we had forgotten, but the champion wasn't just some best buddy of Habib. His name was Islam Mahachev, and Islam Mahachev is well on his way to securing his own legacy as one of the greatest lightweight in history. I never choose Dana, you have some job, give me someone. You had to feel a little sorry for Islam early on. Having to live up to Habib's reputation is a tall task, but right alongside him, you had Charles, a killer, and Volkanovski, a savant. But in one calendar year, Islam has submitted the guy with the most finishes in UFC history, and he knocked out the longest reigning champion. There will never be another Habib. We all knew this, and it's time we accept it. But at the same time, after UFC 294, the year he has had, there will never be another Islam Mahachev either.